morning and afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our cost segregation software tools and tech strategies webinar. We like to begin all of our webinars with a little background on our company, as well as our own personal backgrounds. KBKG is headquartered in Pasadena, California, with additional offices in Illinois, New York, Georgia, and Texas. Since 1999, we have successfully conducted thousands of studies nationwide. KBKG's team has performed studies on facilities ranging in size from 10,000 to over 1 million square feet, resulting in a deferral of hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. We also have highly qualified engineering and tax professionals on staff. Our engineering department has extensive construction experience in reading plans and utilizing RS means and Marshall and swift cost estimation techniques. Our tax department provides support for all cost segregation tax-related issues, including 1031 exchanges, AMT, passive activity, abandonment write-offs, and lease provisions. We are a preferred provider for thousands of CPAs across the country. Now I will turn it over to our presenter, Eddie, so he can tell you a little bit about himself. Eddie? Thanks, Miriam. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, today for this webinar. I'm located in our Bedford, Texas office, which is right between Dallas and Fort Worth, very close to DFW Airport. I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University, with an undergraduate degree in environmental design and a graduate degree in construction management. And I joined for, uh, KBKG about four years ago to lead our Texas-based operations. I also do quality control reviews of work that's performed in other offices around the country. And I'm proud to say that KBKG is very involved in the American Society of Cost Segregation Professionals. This is recognized as the primary professional organization in our industry. And currently, KBKG has eight certified members of the ASCSP, including myself. And I currently serve on its board of directors, its testing committee, and I've been a past chair of the education committee. All the reports that I review here at KBKG are signed and certified with my ASCSP stamp, which is a symbol of the quality of the reports we produce. And anyone else that may have reason to review our report is likely to recognize that. I'm in my 34th year in the cost segregation industry, and 20 of those were with the big four CPA firm. This webinar presumes that you have some basic understanding of cost segregation. I'm going to just briefly go over the benefits of doing a cost segregation study, and I'm going to mention some of the tax implications that you need to consider in conjunction with these studies. I'm also going to discuss some tax strategies and some planning considerations that you might not have thought about before. Finally, I'm going to discuss some new proprietary tools that were created by KBKG and allow tax preparers to generate deductions and value for your clients and potentially generate revenue for your company. Well, cost segregation has been around for decades, although many taxpayers and tax preparers are unaware of it. The IRS, on the other hand, is well aware of cost segregation and, in fact, expects taxpayers to do cost segregation studies. So it published a cost segregation audit techniques guide, or ATG, to assist its examiners when they're auditing returns. And you can view the entire ATG on our website at the link that's displayed on this slide. And by the way, uh, you can, if, if any of you are wondering, you can download the material uh, from this presentation. Uh, so if, if anyone's having trouble doing that, just uh, let us know in the question box. The primary goal of a cost segregation study is to identify depreciable real estate related costs that can be depreciated faster. So typically through five, seven, or 15 year recovery periods. But the secondary goal of a cost segregation study is to identify the depreciable tax basis for each major building component that's likely to be replaced in the future. Examples of these would include the roof, windows, doors, bathroom fixtures, HVAC, and so on. When such components are replaced, tax preparers need this information in order to claim a retirement loss or partial disposition deduction for the remaining depreciation that was left on the retired component. 
you might be wondering what types of real estate transactions are good candidates for a cost segregation study. The most common scenario is existing properties that are acquired by a taxpayer and the purchase price is then recovered going forward over the appropriate recovery periods. Next is new construction, which was placed in service for the first time by the taxpayer and the total capitalized cost of that construction is then recovered over the appropriate recovery periods. Many taxpayers also incur costs to, remove, to remodel their existing properties, and then depending on the facts and circumstances, these costs end up capitalized as well. The last scenario I'll mention is build-outs. This would typically include costs for interior tenant construction within an existing building shell. You might be surprised to know that you can do a cost segregation study on properties that were placed in service in a prior tax year. In fact, you can go as far back as 1987. However, the amount of depreciation you can take on an asset is gonna be limited to that asset's remaining basis. So as a practical matter, it's usually most beneficial to focus on assets that were placed in service sometime during the past 15 to say 20 years. Let's take a look at an example here of a $3 million retail building that's being depreciated straight line over 39 years. The results of a cost segregation study might identify something like $330,000 of five-year tangible personal property and another $360,000 of 15-year land improvements. These are very common kind of results. The reclassification to these shorter recovery periods results in $333,000 of additional deductions and an increase in cash flow of $132,000 over the first five years. Cost segregation has been around so long that it's actually the most common tax planning tool that anyone in the real estate industry should be considering. You can do the study anytime after the building's purchased without filing an amended return. You do this by filing Form 3115 for a change in accounting method, which allows you to claim any missed depreciation deductions in the year you apply the study. So this is very important for tax preparers to consider. If you have the probability of a taxable event in a future year, you may wanna delay the study until the year you're really gonna need those deductions. And as I mentioned earlier, many taxpayers currently anticipate a drop in tax rates so now might be a very good time to take advantage of cost segregation to move those deductions from future years when rates are lower to the current year when rates are still high. Without the tools we'll be discussing in our presentation today, it would only make sense to hire a cost segregation engineer when there was depreciable basis of $750,000 or more. Otherwise, it's just difficult to find enough benefit in the study to justify the fees that would be incurred. For additional updates on tax planning strategies for cost segregation, please see our updates that are posted at the link shown right here on this slide. The items that we see now are all tax considerations that you should be aware of when utilizing cost segregation. First of all, depreciation deductions will also reduce alternative minimum tax. Bonus depreciation can apply to reclassified items in a cost seg study, as long as we're talking about new construction, not an acquired project. Any unused deductions carry forward to future tax years. When a building is sold, the taxpayer or seller may need to recapture depreciation that was taken on the tangible personal property. Accounting method changes are addressed with Form 3115, which means you can retroactively address buildings from prior tax years. Passive activity rules can offset the benefits of doing a cost segregation study. If the real estate activity is passive, then you must use the deduction against income that's also passive. 1031 exchange rules need to be considered. Typically, it's the net increase in depreciable basis associated with the replacement property that's the subject of a cost segregation analysis. Cost segregation can also uh, be a useful tool in estate planning. For this strategy, let's start with some basic rules related to estates that involve real estate. 
first of all, when a building owner dies and property is inherited that has appreciated in value, any gains that built up during the decedent's life are forgiven. The beneficiary of the property receives a step up, which means the property's depreciable tax basis gets reset to the fair market value as of the date of death and depreciation then starts all over again. Because of the step up, there's a time sensitive opportunity to apply cost segregation to the decedent's pre-stepped up basis, in effect creating a permanent tax deduction. To illustrate this, let's look at a building purchased by the decedent in 2008 where the death happens in August of 2015. Since the original investment of $1 million is considered residential rental property, it's depreciated over a long life of 27 and a half years. So by the time of death, the decedent will still have roughly $728,000 of depreciation that he never got to deduct. The decedent's estate will still need to have a final tax return prepared for the period in 2015 that he was alive. And suppose the decedent had sold the property for $2 million right before he died. This would have created a taxable gain of $1.27 million in that final tax return. However, that doesn't happen in our situation since the current estate tax rules forgive any taxable gains built up by the decedent who held that property at death. The beneficiary gets that full step up to the full fair market value of the property on the date of death, in this case to $2 million, and the beneficiary now records the $2 million basis on their tax return going forward. Now, most tax preparers already know that doing a cost segregation study on the $2 million stepped up basis is a good idea. But many tax preparers overlook the time sensitive opportunity to apply a cost segregation study to the pre stepped up basis. This allows the decedent to claim even more depreciation deductions before the death, lowering the building's tax basis and creating a higher step up to fair market value. The idea here is to take as much depreciation before the death since the heir gets a step up to fair market value regardless of the decedent's basis. This strategy typically yields the greatest benefit for the estate because these deductions would otherwise be lost forever if not taken on the decedent's last tax return. In our case study, when the decedent's final tax return is filed along with the Form 3115, they claim missed depreciation deductions of approximately $174,000. And as discussed, this lowers the decedent's building's tax basis, but that's okay since the heir gets a step up to fair market value regardless of the decedent's basis. Because these deductions would have been lost forever, the result then is permanent tax savings just over $68,000. Now I mentioned that this needs to be done on the decedent's final tax return, that's because when a building is acquired in a tax year prior to death, in order to apply a cost segregation study, a 3115 is required, and generally a 3115 can't be filed on an amended return. So from the heirs' perspective, they now get to step up the basis to the current fair market value and begin that depreciation all over again. And since they've already had this retroactive cost segregation study done on the property for the estate, they can now have that study updated to reflect the new fair market value step-up basis at a very minimal cost. This allows the heirs then to maximize their deductions on the new basis. The residential cost segregator tool was created to provide taxpayers with a tool that allows them to prepare a cost segregation report on smaller residential properties without the need to hire a third party cost segregation engineer. By using just basic information and allowing the building owner to fill out a simple survey about the property details, our software provides a detailed cost breakdown for the property 
categorized by tax life that can be used for income tax depreciation purposes. This is accomplished by using empirical construction cost data and proprietary algorithms that were written by our KBKG cost segregation engineering team. The cost of this, uh, this tool will be revealed after the webinar is over with, uh, but most reports that are generated in this tool will result in at least $20,000 of increased deductions in the first five years. Literally, it takes less than 15 minutes of time to do the report, to prepare the whole thing. I'll take that much time and I'm gonna be explaining it to you all the way through. Uh, it involves emailing your client a simple building questionnaire, and it's designed for tax preparers to offer this service as their own. So you'll see that the input screens uh, are white labeled, the screens that your clients see. We provide free audit support from KBKG if the IRS ever examines our report. And it links to our optional 4801A calculator, which is important if you're dealing with a property that was placed in service in a prior tax year. Although our pricing will be discussed after the webinar is over, I can tell you that tax preparers tell us they can charge clients between $1,000 and $2,000 uh, for using this tool uh, on their client's behalf. Before we begin, I want to just emphasize there's three easy steps involved. Step one is to estimate the potential tax savings for your client. This is very simple, and I'll show you how that works. But before you get any further into it, just see if it really makes sense to proceed. Step two, once you decide you want to go forward, you send your a survey invitation link to your client, uh, the building owner to have them fill out the property facts. And then step three, you review the info once they're done and let the residential cost segregator generate the report for you. If the property was placed in service in the current tax year, at that point, you're done. If it was placed in service in a prior tax year, then you go to step four, which is where you link the results to our 41A adjustment calculator. So when the, I do a live demo here in just a moment, I'll demonstrate using the 41A adjustment uh, calculator to show you how easy that is. So bear with me while I just switch screens. So now you're looking at our kbkg.com website, which is the starting point. So when you come to our website, this banner of drop down menus across the top, come to software. If you come down to the very bottom, access kbkgsolutions.com. If you click on that link, it'll take you to this, this page. If you've never been here before, uh, these uh, spaces will be blank, waiting for you to enter your username and password. So if you've never been here, you'll need to click on create an account. Uh, this is free, it doesn't charge anything to create your account, and it'll give you a username and password that you can come back in and log in to go to the next screen. Once your username and password is in, I obviously already have an account, you click on log in, it takes you to the dashboard for our tools. Let me orient you a bit to this dashboard. Uh, I have a subscription. I have a, a, a login profile. And within my profile, I've got the residential cost segregator. It says I have 175 reports available. So I've pre-purchased a block of these reports, and I'm going to consume one of them today. When we're done, I'll have 174 left. We also, I also have access to the cost seg calculator, the 4 to 1A calculator, and the partial disposition calculator. These are tools. It tells my start date and my expiration date for these tools. And then for the cost segregator tool, it just tells me that I have 175 of these reports that I can consume. There's video tutorials on three of these tools in case you um, want to see another round of what I'm going to show you today. And in order to go to the residential cost segregator tool, which we want to demonstrate right now, you click on this green uh, bar right there. And that takes you to the residential cost segregator specific dashboard. And just to orient you to this, again, it shows our 175 uh, reports that are available to me. And there's a frequently asked questions button here. If you click on that button, you'll see that there's lots and lots of questions that have already been addressed that go on. But if your question hasn't been addressed, you can always ask a question here. 
We have some CPA resources and client templates that can be helpful. Uh, these are just some side tools to help you manage this practice if you're going to use the tool a lot. I mentioned the first step is to estimate the tax savings. So I'm going to click on this button right here. Notice that there are six inputs. The first one is optional, the property address. Really, these two here are waiting on you. It's already pre-populated a return on investment factor of 8%. You can change it if you like. There's a estimated federal and state tax bracket. It's showing 40 tax return year 2017. You can change any of those if you like. There's a question mark. If you hover over it, it explains more about what this particular item is. So for now, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to uh, type in a depreciable basis of $450,000. And I'm going to say that this was placed in service in June uh, 15 of 2013. And just by putting in those two inputs, I'm going to now preview my tax savings to see what, the, what it's likely to be uh, before I bother my client with this. So what I discover is that the deductions, additional deductions in year one, should be in the range of $32,000 to $48,000. Increased cash flow based on these other, uh, based on the discount rate and the uh, tax rate are in the range of $13,000 to $19,000. The net present value over the life of the project is between $8,600 and $13,000. And you can see a profile of how this depreciation works. It's a huge spike in the first year because all that depreciation from 2013 through 2016 is being caught up in this first year, and then it drops off significantly. And you can see right here, sort of hovers in one place. That says the 15-year property expires, and then it drops down and finishes off the 27 and a half year property with less depreciation in those later years. So it's the same amount of overall depreciation, just we're taking the bulk of it in the first year and second year and out of those later years. So it, it looks like it definitely makes sense. I don't want to, I want to recommend this to my client. If I choose to, I could download this to a PDF and email my client, or I could just recommend it to him either way. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard now. I'm gonna go ahead and, and create a new report. So I'm going to click on new, by the way, before I do this, let me just show you, there's a number of reports already here. These are ones I've done in the past. I've got multiple pages of these because I do demonstrations all the time. Uh, this one down here says it's ready for my review. It's one I just didn't go back and review yet, but we're going to create one today and it'll send a survey to our client. And when, when our client finishes it, it'll come back. It'll prompt me just like this to say it's ready for review. So I'm going to say new report. And I'm going to say this is a house in Euless, Texas. And I said the depreciable basis is $450,000. Whoops. And uh, I said 2013. June uh, 15th. Oops. I'm going to say my total square footage is going to be 4598. I'm looking at one that's a listing, actually. And lot size is 19166. It is a one story. There's no basement. I'm not going to answer more questions. I'm going to let the, uh, my client do that because he knows all about his property. So I just started it, basically. And I'm going to uh, save it. And I'm going to send him uh, an invitation link. And I'm going to say this is my client. It's going to go to uh, me. I'm going I'm to be both sides of the table here. I'm going to 
go back to dashboard. I'm going to put this over here. This has already come to my email. It says, please complete, complete the following summary about your residential property for income tax depreciation purposes. If there's tax related questions you're not sure how to answer, please contact your tax preparer or person who initiated this survey. After the report's complete, it'll be used to file your tax return and you can request a copy in PDF format from your tax preparer or person who initiated this survey. This is a pre-packaged sort of introductory email. You can certainly change it. This is just the one that was in there a moment ago and, and came to me. So now as the, as the building owner, I can simply click on this link that my tax preparer sent me. And notice it's um, white labeled. You can't really uh, tell that it came from KBKG. This is just uh, something my, my tax preparer sent me. So I'm going to say, I'm going to start answering these questions. It looks like all this, uh, my tax preparer uh, entered correctly. I'm going to say it's a brick exterior. There's no basement. The physical condition, I would say, is average. Construction quality is uh, average. I'll save and continue. Number of bedrooms, we'll say, is uh, four. Number of bathrooms, three. Oops three, no fire sprinklers. Kitchen, we'll say, has ceramic tile. And the family room, living room, laminate makes sense. Dining room, laminate sounds good. I'll say we have carpet and a master and other bedrooms. And there's other rooms, we'll say, has carpet and the hallways are laminate. And here in Texas, it's always gonna be heating and cooling. Uh, Central ducted is common. I'll say that there's going to be uh, six ceiling fans, that our window treatments are curtains. The uh, house comes with a garbage disposal, range oven, dishwasher. Washer and dryer normally wouldn't come with it. Microwave is not built, built in. Refrigerator is not built in. And I'll say save and continue. Type of parking garage, it's uh, attached. There's uh, two spaces, and the exterior driveway spaces, I'll say, is four. It has a pool. Uh, there's, notice this says pool deck is already figured in with the pool. This is for any other kind of decking. I'll say it has additional decking and it has landscaping. There's a wrought iron fence. We'll say there's 20 feet of wrought iron fence and another 80 feet of uh, wood fence. And I'll save and continue. So at this point, I've entered all the inputs that I need to enter. And now I need to just double check, make sure my work looks good. And as the property owner, I say, yes, it, I know my property. This all looks good to me. I'm going to send it back to my uh, tax preparer. So I'm going to uh, confirm and submit for review. Okay, so I'll close this, and I'm going to uh, close this, and go back in. Let me see. I, I have um, an email back to me now. Now this is the tax preparer receiving the email. Thank you for using the residential cost segregator. Your client has successfully submitted their property information and it's ready for your review. In order to complete your client's report, click the following link to access the solutions website. So I'm already there. I'm gonna go back into the residential cost segregator and see what my client has done with that report. So notice now there's that, that property I just created today. It says ready for my review. So I'm gonna review it. I have a, um, uh, a link here that says, please confirm that all information is accurate. Once the calculate button is pressed, reports cannot be modified without purchasing another credit. So just warning me, I haven't consumed anything yet, haven't spent any money on this, uh, but once I calculate, that's when I'll use my first report credit. So I think everything looks pretty good. The only thing that, that really might be of interest to me as a tax preparer is making sure that my client has the correct tax rate, uh, the right ROI, 
and the right uh, tax year. And I'm satisfied all that looks good. So I'm going to say save. And now I'm going to uh, calculate. It's going to give me one more disclaimer. Now I'm about to use one of those um, report credits. I agree. Proceed. And there you go. That fast, it created a cost segregation report all based on the, the reporting of those property facts uh, by my client. So what you will notice here is the additional tax savings in year one, 50,419, the increased cash flow in year one, 20,168, the net present value over the life of the project, 16,711. Here's a pie chart that shows how the property breaks down. The blue is the five year. The red is the 15 year. And then you can see uh, the total dollars, 8% went into five year, 22% into 15 year. It's $450,000 in depreciable tax basis. Shows that same sort of a graphical chart we saw earlier uh, when we did the estimate of, this, of the tax savings. The next section is uh, interesting. It's breaking it into the nine systems that are useful for the tangible property regulations. So you see the building structure and interiors, all the components related to that. Same thing with HVAC, fire protection. And then you see the, um, the personal property items and the land improvements at the bottom. Uh, so for example, let's say the tile. Let's say that we, we said we had ceramic tile in the kitchen and there's the purchase cost. Uh, the basis of that would be $5,638. And let's say that a couple years from now, after we've been depreciating that a bit, that we decide we need to do a kitchen remodel to make our uh, rental property more attractive and compelling uh, and, and hoping to raise our rents uh, with the next renter. So we come in and spend $20,000 on a kitchen remodel, including replacing the ceramic tile. Well, the question is how much remaining basis in ceramic tile was there that could potentially be written off? Well, we can figure it out if we know that the original basis was 5638 and we're two years into the depreciation on that. So it gives us a starting point from which we can calculate the remaining basis that can be taken as a partial disposition in a later year. The last part of this uh, report is the, the inputs from our client. So these are the, the pieces of information that they were responsible for that I didn't as the tax preparer necessarily know about they know about their property, and so this shows what facts they filled out, the property facts that went into the calculations that were done in our report. Another interesting thing that can be done is these results can be saved as a PDF. They can also be exported to Excel. Looks like this. And most importantly, since this was placed in service back in 2013, uh, we have our link to calculate the 41A adjustment. Again, this is the calculation that has to be done in order to fill out Form 3115 for a change in accounting method. So the, the easy part is filling out the Form 3115. The more time consuming part is actually doing this uh, 41A adjustment calculation. So just a few things need to be input here. We'll say this is uh, Eddie's, my client is Eddie's Realty. Put in the EIN number. And um, uh, we said this is for the current tax year. So this clarifies what we're talking about with tax year there for you. Anytime you see the little uh, question marks, there's helpful information for you. The accumulated depreciation is an important item to fill in here. I'm going to say that there's $57,000 of accumulated depreciation. I'll go ahead and put AMT on there too. For the method, I'm going to say straight line. That's what it, this is, I'm filling out what it was like before the cost saved here. Uh, Mid-month convention. 
27 and a half year property, no depreciate, no bonus depreciation. That's what we had. So it's already populated all of the items that were identified uh, within the property based on the property facts answered by our client. And it's showing you the uh, depreciation method and life. 27 and a half years shown first. And then it shows you the five year property and then finally the 15 year property. All of this adds up to $450,000. And so I can hit calculate and it's going to, based on the inputs I, I put in at the top of the screen, it's gonna calculate the 41A uh, adjustment. If I wanted to, this, this asset we said was in service in 2013, let's say uh, that, as I mentioned, a couple of years into it, maybe 2015, we did a $20,000 kitchen remodel and we wanted to reflect that. Again, it's a very, in the scheme of things, kind of a small amount, but maybe there's some significant dollars in there that we could call tangible personal property. And right now it's just showing up as a $20,000 line item on the depreciation schedule. So maybe I happen to know that uh, $10,000 of appliances were put in and uh, $10,000 of ceramic tile was, was put in. And so I could create a new asset right here uh, and, and break it into those components as long as they add up to $20,000, just like the assets up here add up to the $450,000. I can take that $20,000 asset from 2015 and break it into its subcomponents I know about in a, in a in a very simple way. But not to complicate it, for this exercise, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate the 41A adjustment. And there it is, in that long. So you got a negative uh, 45,105, that's a good thing, a negative uh, number for the 41A adjustment. And there's the cumulative net present value, $16,911. And then that's pushed down to each item. It shows you how each item contributes to that total, uh, 45,105. And then, so there's the regular calculation and at the bottom half of the screen is the AMT calculation. And that's what you will need to fill out your 3115. So with that, and this can be exported again to PDF and Excel, uh, Net present value summary can be created for your client. So with that, I'm gonna shift back again to our PowerPoint presentation. So when you're doing the, the residential cost segregator, um, what I'd like you to see on this screen is as the basis grows, as you have more depreciable basis, like the first example is 200,000, then 300,000, then 400,000, different types, rental duplex, single family, three unit rental, 500,000. The more basis in general, then the higher the benefit's gonna be. I mean, it just, it just makes sense. You got more deductions and more deductions leads to more net present value. Uh, that's just sort of the directional nature of it. So if you get to really small property, you know, under a hundred thousand dollars, that that first step, the estimate the tax savings is gonna be really important. You may you may do that and think, you know, it's just not worth it, or or maybe it is. It just depends. Uh, but that's what that part of the tool there, that step one part where we estimated the preview of the tax savings was all about. This tool is designed to work for properties up to and limited to five hundred thousand dollars in depreciable basis. We also inserted some screenshots of the different um, screens where you input the variables. And then here's what the, uh, the different items of property that are broken out in the report uh, for tangible property uh, regulations looks like. Okay. Well, we're gonna talk about retirements and partial dispositions. The current regulations allow you to take a loss deduction when you remove components from your building. So for example, if you paid $50,000 to replace all the HVAC units in your building, then you would certainly need to capitalize that amount and recover that through depreciation over 39 years. You would also wanna figure out though, how much of the old HVAC that was replaced was not fully depreciated and claim that amount as an immediate deduction in the year this event occurs. 
So in the slides to come, I'm going to show you a new tool that can be used in lieu of a cost segregation study to figure out that value of any building component without doing a cost segregation study. But prior to that, prior to my demonstration of that, I want to go through a case study to show you why it's important to figure out this value. So let's look at an example to see the impact this can have. Suppose a taxpayer acquired a building three years ago for $5 million. This year, they spend a million dollars to remodel part of the second floor. Typical things, ceilings, walls, lighting, plumbing, ducting, wiring. Uh, we analyze the original cost of the demolished components and discover that they represent $470,000 of the original $5 million building basis. Well, the taxpayer can now recognize a loss of $430,000 in the current tax year. That's the original cost basis, less depreciation already taken. Remember, you can only take advantage of this partial disposition in conjunction with a timely filed tax return. Otherwise, you have to forego the opportunity to recognize the retirement. Here's a very important point to remember with respect to retirements. If you continue depreciating assets that could have properly been retired, eventually you'll pay recapture tax upon sale of the property. And recapture rates are the highest ordinary rates compared to capital gains rates. Let's look at our previous example where the taxpayer acquired a building three years ago for $5 million and had $470,000 in retirements in the current year. If the taxpayer had not taken the retirement deductions this year, they would have continued to depreciate that $470,000 until the property is one day sold and recapture would then be required. So let's say that $370,000 of the basis was 39 year property and the other $100,000 was seven year property. The recapture tax on the real property would be $370,000 times 25% added to the 100,000 times 35% for the personal property for a total recapture tax of 127,500. However, as a result of the retirement study, the recapture tax goes to zero. There's capital gain tax on the $470,000 for a total of $94,000. So the net difference between the 127,500 and the 94,000 is your permanent tax savings in this example of $33,500 upon sale. Based on the final disposition regulations, there's a couple of ways you could determine the remaining basis of a component that's been removed from a building. If you've had a cost segregation study done that has already identified the basis in the component, then you're all set to calculate how much depreciation has already been taken and what the remaining basis of the component is. But if you don't have a cost segregation study, there is a way to calculate the original basis using the producer price index. Basically, you can discount the current replacement cost new of the asset back to the date the asset was first placed in service. If the asset was not new at the time it was placed in service, then an adjustment also needs to be made to recognize the asset's condition when it was acquired and placed in service. However, a word of caution here, this method can only be used for restorations, not for betterments, not for adaptations. This makes sense when you think about it because if you're changing the use or improving the quality of the new asset compared to the original component, the cost of the new asset will not be an apples to apples in comparison to the original asset that was replaced. KBKG has created this online partial disposition calculator and the link here is shown uh, how to get to it. Let's go through an example of why the condition of the component needs to be considered when using the discounting approach to determine the original basis. Suppose a building were acquired three years ago and the owner spent $200,000 to replace aluminum windows this year in the current tax year. We can use the PPI index to discount the current cost of the windows 
back three years, so the cost new of the windows would have been $186,000 when placed in service. However, this again represents the cost of brand new windows. We need to make an adjustment to recognize that the windows were not new when the building was acquired three years ago. One way to do this is to consider the normal expected life of aluminum windows, which is 20 years. Since we replaced the windows three years after acquisition, we might assume the windows were effectively 17 years old. That leads to an appropriate condition factor using this rationale of 27%, which results in a value conclusion of $50,220 for the windows at the time of acquisition. For further discussion on this topic, I really encourage you to take a look at the BNA article referenced on this slide. Before we do our demo, let me just uh, refresh you on what, what we're talking about here. First of all, that this partial disposition calculator is going to determine the value of a component that was removed from a building without a cost seg study. This literally takes less than five minutes. It has very few inputs. It utilizes an IRS approved calculation method, the PPI method. And the pricing on this will provide at the end of the webinar, after the webinar is over, it considers the condition of each component at the time it was acquired. And we use normal life, uh, the quality and the age uh, to take this into consideration. So let me switch screens again. And I'll do the demo for you. So back at our dashboard, the partial disposition calculator, I'm going to click on that link. I'm going to use the same facts we were just talking about uh, to show you how this works. So I'm going to say that the, uh, the windows were replaced and it was $200,000. And this was in May 1st of 2015, the replacement occurred. The original basis of the building was $3 million. And the date of purchase of the retired component was May 15th, 2010. The building was originally constructed in 1985. So the building was acquired in 2010. We did this replacement in 2015. And we spent $200,000 on the replacement. The, build, the whole building cost $3 million. That's what we're saying. And the, and the original, uh, it was originally constructed in 1985. So now I'm going to enter the accumulated depreciation. I'm going to say that it has $250,000 of accumulated depreciation. That will come straight off our depreciation schedule. So these are all easy inputs. And notice that it's already calculated the producer price index at the time of purchase versus at the time of replacement. But the last piece that we need to insert is the type of component. We said it's aluminum windows. I could type it in right here, or I could search it up. I'd like you to see that we've tried to put in just about every kind of uh, component that might need to be replaced in a building, all, the, all your normal things that tend to wear out before the whole building wears out. So I'm just scrolling down so you can see some of those. So under doors and windows, if I go to windows, we said aluminum windows. So it populated that field based on the menu drop down. So it knows that the normal life of a replaced component here is 20 years. And the actual age of the building at the time of purchase is 25 years. Uh, the number of years the windows were used prior to retirement, uh, five years. So if the normal life is 20 and we've effectively used it five years before we replaced them, we're sort of implying that the effective age of the windows at the time of purchase was 15 years, 20 minus five, 15. So we've got all our facts that we need to calculate the condition adjusted um, values that we're looking for. 
So I'm going to click calculate, and there you go. It just did it that fast. And so what we see at the top here, this is the PPI adjusted cost of component removed. So uh, $73,388. Uh, this is condition adjusted. And we hover over that adjusted value after applying the PPI and factoring the normal life of the component as well as its age at time of purchase. And then the cost new, $183,469. Right here, the $6,116, that's the five years of tax depreciation accumulated between 2010 and 2015. And the 67272 the remaining tax basis that can be deducted in the year of disposition. So that's how simple that is to use. How do you choose a cost segregation provider? If you find yourself in that situation where you know the partial disposition calculator doesn't fit your circumstances or the residential cost segregator isn't fitting your circumstances, I'd highly recommend that you find a firm that you trust. And a good way to do that is to seek out an individual that's certified by the ASCSP. Compare the resumes and bios of those who are proposing to do this analysis for you. Beware of firms that don't post the bios and credentials on their websites. Consider the possibility of an IRS audit in the future and think about who you want representing you before the IRS. Consider the size of the firm and whether they have resources to stay on top of complex tax issues that are affected by a cost segregation study that create exposure in other areas. My contact information is in the, uh, the materials that you can download. I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll be putting uh, pieces I find out there about the latest developments in the tax law. Uh, love to connect with you. That officially concludes our webinar. If you hang around just a, a minute more, I'll talk about the pricing on the two tools that I've demonstrated today. First of all, the partial disposition calculator, which determines the value of a component, again, without, without doing a cost irrigation study, just for those components that have been removed, is $49 a day for 24-hour access, or $449 for annual access, all you can eat. And there's the address for it on the, uh, the slide. The residential cost segregator, free audit support is included in this uh, from KBKG at the IRS, examines our report. It's $399 uh, per report. And we do have discounts available for multiple uh, reports purchased as a bundle. So if you buy 10 or more, it's $379. 20 or more, it drops to $359, and at 50 or more, it drops to $339 per report. So bundling them is a good idea if you're going to be doing a lot of these. That's our webinar for the day. Really appreciate you joining us, and uh, encourage you to reach out to us with your questions. Uh, thank you for your time today.